How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be removing a seized impeller shaft bearing on a Craftsman snowblower auger housing. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today I'm working on a Craftsman auger housing here that a customer brought into me because the rear impeller bearing at the back, that's where the auger uh, pulley goes, that seized inside of the bearing flange. So the uh, bearing seized to the shaft, the shaft was spinning, obviously spinning the bearing and the bearing destroyed the bearing flange. And then that led to the whole thing kind of wobbling and making a lot of noise. My customer was uh, really concerned and uh, took it apart himself, brought it over. So saved himself a little bit of money so that I didn't have to disassemble everything. So I went ahead and ordered a brand new bearing and flange assembly. The part number for that is going to be a 532-188-909. And then you guys can see that I've used quite a bit of nickel anti-seize. I've pretty much painted the whole backside of the flange as well as got some nickel anti-seize to the inner race of the impeller shaft bearing. And uh, we're just using some Permatex nickel anti-seize for that so that uh, this doesn't happen to this bearing. Now you're gonna notice that I am using the little fork tool here that we made. You've seen me use this before in previous videos to remove valve springs and fuel lines. And uh, basically I'm not using this to try to remove the bearing from the impeller shaft because it is extremely seized onto that shaft. However, what happens when you remove the flange is that the whole impeller and auger system with the gearbox wants to fall down because the uh, housing is flipped up. So all I'm doing is using this fork tool to just give a little bit of pressure to lift that bearing up off of the auger housing. Now that's gonna be important because the next step is to use some type of puller to remove the seized bearing from that impeller shaft. You're definitely going to need some type of puller and this one here is your average flywheel puller. So you would hook this onto the end of whatever you're pulling and then you would tighten that center threaded rod down and it will pull up on the backside of whatever it is that is seized that you're trying to remove. The only thing is using this style puller here is you're gonna notice that there's quite a bit of material that has to get underneath of that bearing. So you may not have enough room even when using something like this to pry up on that bearing and create a little bit more space. So there's actually going to be another tool that we're going to be using and it's known as a split type puller that's going to be used in situations just like this. So what I have here is an eight mile lake, 14 piece heavy duty split puller. And I got this thing off of Amazon and you guys are gonna notice that it's very different from your typical flywheel puller. And that's because of the design of these pullers here. So this is what's referred to as a split puller. It has two pieces on threaded rods that you're gonna open up and drop onto a surface. And then you're going to close these two pieces underneath your object that you're pulling. And in today's case, that's gonna be a bearing. Now you're gonna to get to see this split puller in action, but the split puller may not be enough to get a seized bearing off of a shaft. And usually you're going to have to apply some sort of heat. And if you don't, you could end up breaking the threads off of your puller in the actual split puller itself, like you see right here. So these are just cast, right? They're not the strongest. These aren't like forged because again, this was something that I bought off of uh, Amazon. So it's gonna be like a Chinese brand and breaking one of these tools is what can occur if you don't heat the object in which you are trying to remove. And that way the split puller won't have to work as hard and there will be less stress on these upright pieces. So obviously the uh, bolt and the pulley has been removed from the rear side of this auger housing, as well as the flange you saw it there on the workbench all damaged. So in today's video, what we're gonna be trying to do is using a larger preformed coil with the Induction Innovations Venom HP induction heating tool here. And I'm essentially gonna be going and trying my best to heat up the bearing now it might start to heat up and cook some of the grease inside of that bearing. And I'm assuming it will also start to smoke as you can see it there, but it should allow that heat to penetrate in 
All right, so I've opened the garage door just to get a little more ventilation because obviously that is a 2RS bearing, which means it's a rubber seal on both sides. And that thing is packed full of grease, which we're obviously burning off while heating up the metal on that bearing. Most of you have probably seen me use this tool in uh, previous videos and they do have these uh, taper intersections. So I've went ahead and uh, lifted the impeller shaft up so that uh, I had just enough room to get it under there. And I had to use the larger one because there are going to be some threaded bolts that come out that are for holding the uh, bearing flange into place. And then you take these uh, uprights there, thread those in, you take your bracket there and then you take this piece and thread that in. And then when we tighten down on this up here, it will pull on the bearing that is seized. Now, the only issue is that we are pulling on the outside of the bearing and not on the inside. So there is a chance that the outer race and the ball bearings could, you know, pretty much break away from the inner race. But at this point, I'm just going to use my impact very slowly. So with a little bit of help from the Venom HP, just to get that bearing to expand a little bit, and also a little help from the split bearing puller, which may have worked on its own without the use of any heat, but sometimes you just have to use heat. Again, you can use a torch, but you know I wanted to show the Venom HP in use, and uh, again, that bearing is going to slide right off now. So at this point, the new bearing will not go on to the shaft. Now that's gonna be common because again, when the bearing seizes to the shaft, there may be some damage. And then what's gonna happen is when we use the split puller to pull the bearing that was seized on that shaft off, there could be some burrs and whatnot. So I'm going with uh, just a like a medium file to clean off any of the burrs. And then I'm using some emery paper here, which is some fine sandpaper with just like some WD-40 used as lubricant you know, penetrating oil, anything like that would work. And I'm just cleaning up the shaft. And then basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm filing first, then using the emery paper to smooth things out and then trying the bearing again. And then you wanna get it to the point where the bearing goes on snugly, but you don't wanna have to hammer that on. So, you know, if it goes on too easy, that means the shaft diameter is too small for that bearing. And the shaft, while it will still be supported, uh, you know, positionally, the shaft will spin inside of the inner race of that bearing. You want the bearing's inner race to come in a snug, tight contact, maybe like a one thousandth of an inch tolerance so that, you know, you have to press it on. So the point of using a file and then emery paper and then checking the bearing is going to be that you're not going to take away more material than you absolutely need. As I said, you want a nice, firm fit, but you want to be able to slide it on. You don't want to have to hammer the bearing onto the shaft. So I have my bearing in the flange now. I'm going to put it on top of the shaft. You're going to notice that it doesn't slide down, but if I apply just the slightest amount of pressure here, the bearing starts to go into the shaft. Obviously, it's been lubricated with some of that nickel anti-seize. Now, at this point, I'm not going to set it all the way down. I want to remove the auger and the impeller so that I can check the condition of the front uh, plastic bushings because they're just plastic. So they could have worn out if this thing was, you know, sideways and the whole thing was wobbling in there, uh, they could be worn as well. So I plan on, you know, disassembling this whole unit and then checking those. Uh, but the one thing that I did want to note, because I'm not going to be showing that on camera, is that when you install this bearing, there's going to be obviously the pulley and the bolt that goes in there. The whole auger is going to slump forward when you have the auger housing set up like this. So I'm gonna put my hand inside of the chute here where the uh, impeller shaft is, and I'm going to lift up on this, and you're gonna see just how much it raises. It doesn't look like that much, but I can assure you that that's a big difference in how tight the bolt is going to be uh, when you're driving it in with an impact or, uh, you know, turning it with a, a wrench to tighten your pulley on. So you want to block up the gearbox as much as possible or grab a hold of the impeller shaft and hold up on that as much as possible so that, you know, it puts it into the position that it would normally be in. So I ended up taking the complete auger assembly out of the housing so that I could change the plastic bushings at the front for the uh, auger shaft. I'll get you a part number for that in a moment. Basically, they're just held in by two 10 millimeter 
bolts on the uh, edges there and you know you take them out and the whole thing comes out. So uh, that was a quick process to do. Uh, at this point, I wanted to bring you back for, you know, talking about blocking up the gearbox, because as I said, you know, if you lift that shaft up, you're gonna see just how much it's moving up and down, right? So uh, ideally what you wanna do is get your bearing flange tightened down first, then block up the uh, gearbox and then go ahead and put your pulley on with your bolt because I just want to show you briefly if we try to put the pulley onto uh, the shaft now without any upwards pressure on you know that gearbox so the gearbox is not blocked and no one is lifting up on the impeller shaft you're going to notice this large gap and if you you know, aren't familiar with this, you're just gonna put your bolt and your washer in here and you're gonna start tightening your bolt down and you're gonna snap your bolt long before the shaft pulls up to the point where the shaft is almost near flush with the pulley. And then you'll notice here that I've used some blue thread locker with some new stainless steel nuts. You'll also notice that I'm not using any washers and that's because the manual doesn't actually call for washers here. And when this was disassembled, there were no washers underneath the original nuts. Um, in fact, there was only one nut and uh, the issue uh, that my customer had was when the bearing seized to the shaft and started to damage and wear out the bearing flange, one of the nuts backed off, which then caused the whole thing to start rattling even more, which then backed off the other nut. So at this point, two new nuts, blue thread locker, and uh, that'll take care of that. Once again, a little bit of blue thread locker on the shaft bolt for the pulley there with the gearbox just blocked on the bottom and now we can uh, go ahead and spin this make sure that it spins freely obviously there's no binding but before wrapping this up there were two things that i wanted to mention the first being uh, i did replace the plastic bushings for the auger there so when I originally installed them, I just snug these up by hand. Basically, that just allows me to position everything. Um, these don't move too much, but you always want to be able to pull the impeller shaft back as far as you can, like I said. So now I went ahead and tightened them up by hand again because they go into plastic. They are coarse threads, so you don't want to strip or break the plastic bushings. And just to note, the part number for the plastic auger shaft bushings is going to be a 532-420-478 and that's going to be the auger shaft bearing even though they're plastic bushings they call it a bearing and this is ready to go back to my customer well that's going to be it for today's video if you guys enjoyed it think about leaving me a thumbs up you know it really helps me out you can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos i upload every single week so be sure to stop on by next week check channel out for new content and as always guys Thanks for watching.